Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is the mayor of Thunder Bay, Keith Hobbs. Welcome, Keith. Hi, Steve. Great to be here again. Thanks for coming again. I just want to remind our viewers that Keith was on about 14 months ago, and we do put the shows on YouTube. So if you want to kind of check uh, some of the personal background and what Keith and I talked about, it's on YouTube on Community Conversations. So I normally start the show, Keith, with some background information, and we kind of shared that in the last time. So I want to get right to the meat and, and in a way, pick up where we left off last time. And we ended the show really talking about the challenges the city has and, and all the municipalities that the changes have happened over the last 20, 25 years where the federal government has downloaded services onto provincial programs, provincial programs have downloaded them onto the municipality, oftentimes without the ability to do the kind of taxation and have the funds available. I mean, the federal government used to pay 50% of our health care. And what's it down now to 20% or something like that? Same with education and, and a number of these programs. So the city is in this rough spot. You would kind of said, geez, I'm hopeful that with a provincial uh, liberal and a federal liberal, we may see a little bit more balancing in terms of those resources. Where are we at now? Well, Steve, I think you saw a prime example of uh, what I was talking about when I said the perfect storm. We have uh, three cabinet ministers, uh, one federally and two provincially, and we ha also have a federal MP here now uh, in the city. And uh, just this week, uh, we re were recipients of $6 million uh, for our transit infrastructure. And those are the kinds of things I was talking about is um, instead of downloading, uploading to the upper levels of government. And uh, that's a classic example. That was a windfall like we haven't seen probably since 2009 when the uh, funds were allocated for the waterfront. This is the biggest infusion of dollars uh, federally uh, that we've seen since then. So, um, and you're right, there is so much downloading. Uh, just an example now, about 65% or 67% of our tax taxes are paid by the residential uh, homeowner. 65% was so it? I think it's around 65 to 67%. Okay. And Two that thirds. number was a lot lower uh, because we had a lot of industry, we had a lot of commercial and and uh, you know we've seen the the downturn in forestry and and all those jobs lost the grain elevators uh, mills you name it so now we're trying to get that back and um, that's why we need the help of the other levels of government so give me that overview so if we get about two-thirds from residents and that's through property taxes then we also have the business taxes and then we have contributions from the province and the federal. How, yes. What percentages, yeah. how does that play um, out? I don't know the exact numbers but um, we're seeing more and more I think like we've been very successful and we have an intergovernmental affairs committee uh, that are the lobbyists. There's five of us, myself and four other city councillors. Councillor Joe Verderamo is the chair of that and I think we've been very successful uh, in our lobby efforts with government. We've spent a lot of time uh, in Toronto and uh, Ottawa. Um, you know, you saw the attendance record for council coming out last week and uh, I missed 17 meetings, but those meetings were at other, uh, you know, federal and provincial uh, uh, meetings with ministers and other functions uh, to try and promote Thunder Bay. So um, we're doing that in a big way. I think we've stepped up uh, way higher and, and we've raised the bar on that. And we're seeing the benefits of it. Uh, just We just received a million dollars for sport tourism for the under 18 baseball. And uh, those are the kinds of things that we lobby for constantly. And uh, we're seeing the success. So as long as we have this perfect storm, as I call it, I think we're gonna be in good shape. So what's, what's the global annual budget for the city? What are we um, looking? We're about uh, 250 million uh, budget. Um, you know, all in, and um, we have $3 billion in assets as a, as a community. Um, budget time is upon us right now, and uh, we have the hard decisions to make. Um, uh, we were looking at, I believe it was 5.5% uh, uh, coming into budget time, and I think that's a lot lower now, which should be good news for residents. Um, 
I'm not going to say the number, but it's a number that I can live with as a starting point, and we'll try and pare it down from there and bring in a decent budget. I think all councillors uh, want to get down to where our budgets are um, uh, similar to uh, what the uh, pr consumer price index is and the cost of living indexes are and, and um, make it easier for people to manage here. Um, because we do have a lot of issues here. Well, and that kind of balance or the dance with our provincial government and our municipal, for example, um, we're just now looking at the province coming up with the idea of a basic income mm -hmm. that would raise the rates for people who are on social assistance. Mm -hmm. And we know now the rates are so low that people struggle to be able to provide food for their family and this creates other issues that then sometimes fall onto the lap of the city. Yeah, exactly. Homelessness is one of them. And, uh, you know, we just did our point in time count, um, you know, with the uh, 20,000, um, um, you know, homeless uh, uh, count. And um, we found that we probably have about 300 identified homeless people, but I would say triple that number, double or triple that number. Uh, it, it's a huge number. And uh, most of the people that are with, without housing um, are single male adults. So the good news is um, DSAB has uh, housed, uh, they built 16 uh, additional housing units last year, and uh, we have another 20 planned. First of all, Thunder Bay, uh, in case people don't know, uh, contribute $18 million. We used to have Thunder Bay housing, and we uh, dealt that off to the DSAB. So through the, the DSAB, um, we, we pay a levy of about $18 million a year. And uh, so 22 more housing units are planned to be built in 2017, which is good news. And the spin-off from that, I sit on the uh, shelter house board and uh, we're seeing numbers decrease for the first time in a long time, uh, the number of users of shelter house. And that's good news because we all talked as a board that we'd love to shut the place down. And to shut the place down, we need these housing units. We've met with Minister Ballard through our Intergovernmental Affairs, uh, and he is working closely with the federal government. Again, that perfect storm. And um, money is now flowing from the province and the feds. And I like to think that uh, we are part of that because of our lobbying efforts as a city, uh, that those funds are going to start flowing now uh, more freely, and uh, we can rectify this homelessness. Uh, and the product of homelessness is crime. Um, hospital stays, uh, you know, a, a real tax on our services and, and uh, then who gets the brunt of that? The taxpayer. Um, so it's a vicious cycle that um, I think if we attack the homelessness issue in a big way and it's high on our agenda for our 2015 to 2018 strategic plan going forward, um, I think it's going to go a long way to uh, taxing those other services less. less. Uh, people say, well, why do we need so many police officers? Why do we need so many EMS? We're going to have to take a short break. Yeah. We're going to come right back. For sure. Please stay with us.